Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're going to be furnishing or filling the rooming house pantry cabinet. Now, if you haven't seen the video of me making this cabinet, definitely check out my playlist. And you see I made it to look really aged and old. And keep in mind, dolls, this particular piece was made specifically for the room and the space it's going to fit. So I already knew before I designed it what I wanted to put in it. So now these are some small pieces of fabric that I cut and I had ironed and I realized they needed to be folded to fit inside the space neatly. So I pulled out my fabric fusion and folded them into shapes that would fit nicely on that shelf. I want to stack them to look as though they're linens and tablecloths or um, napkins and things like that. And also I was careful to choose fabrics that had more of a vintage feel rather than a, vi a modern print. And those are the little details you have to look at dolls when you're creating your space. Things have to make sense. And although everything in the rooming house is not going to be historically exact or correct, I want my details or small details like this to be visually believable. <laughs> now here are some knives that I made actually in one of my earlier videos on this channel. If you haven't seen when I made the knives from scraps, trash to treasure, definitely check that out in my playlist. I definitely think this lower drawer is the perfect place for knives because it's still close to the kitchen. I consider the, the silverware but I didn't think they would uh, really match up in that space. I think they belong more in the dining room. Now here are some more uh, linen or towels that I made. I thought they would fit nicely in that cabinet as well. I'm laughing to myself because so many of my videos are related to one another. But if you haven't seen my video for the towels for the rooming house bathroom, definitely check that out in my playlist. Okay, so now that I have the linens, the towels, and the cloths stacked up on that open shelf and the knives in the drawers, let's turn to the cabinets. Now I have plenty of room and I definitely spaced them to specifically fit certain pieces that I made for the rooming house dollhouse. So let me look at my collection to see where I'll start. So these shelves were definitely made to accommodate the fruit and vegetable jars that I filled with resin. And that video is also in the playlist. <laughs> so I just want to show you I've got peppers and I also made peaches and I made a jar of apples and also some cherries and I do have squash. So I made lots of different shapes and colors dolls because you want your cabinets to look varied. And that's what I did to provide visual interest. So when you put it in the cabinet, you won't have just green, 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 or yellow, 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 yellow. You have a mix, which makes it really nice to look at. Now dolls, this is that large jar of cinnamon that I showed you I made years and years and years ago. It's quite special to me because I made it when I was a young girl. And it means a lot to me to find a place for it in the rooming house, dollhouse pantry. So I put it on that shelf because I have plenty of room. And because it's a nice filler, it's plenty of room to put a lot of smaller or shorter things in front of it on the same shelf. Now, dolls, as I always tell you, this is a process that you cannot rush. I changed things around several times, looking at the shapes, the colors, the sizes. And although I'm using wax and not glue to put the things on the shelves, I don't want to have to keep taking it out over and over again because I'm not satisfied this time. So I take the time to create an image that makes me happy. Now, I may want to change it at some other time, but when I complete it this time, you want to create images that make you want to stop and stare, even though you did it yourself. <laughs> now, in the beginning, dolls, when I was doing the shelves, I started trying to concentrate on one part 
at a time. But when you're looking at it visually, you kind of have to balance it out to make it look visually interesting. So I added a few jars in one corner and added a few in another. And then I decided I needed to balance out the bulky jars with some smaller, more delicate pieces to give it a more packed pantry look. Now I know in my pantry, when it gets to the point where things are pretty full, you just start to put things anywhere. You may start out having things really organized, but as it gets fuller and fuller, you just tuck things wherever they fit. And that's what I wanted it to look like. And after I worked with it a bit, I started to pull out some of my mass-produced pieces, which were some simple little jars, plus a collection of other jars and cans of tiny kitchen items that I've collected over the years. And here's a little familiar cookie tin. It's very popular. I got it in a bundle of miniatures I purchased off eBay. I thought it was a really nice addition to that shelf. It gave a lot of visual interest, and the shape is really nice. We usually kept the cookie tin way after the cookies were gone. But in this instance, the tin is actually filled with cookies. I make sure my dolls never run out. <laughs> And after a while, it seemed as though I was working the ends toward the middle, which worked out kind of good because I figured I could put something big in the middle. I found a big jar of candy canes, and I thought that might fit nicely in the center. And I played a little more and found another jar of mints that I made a while back, and I thought that might look nice as well. So dolls, these are the reasons why when you make um, some of your pieces or make anything for your doll house. When you're in the mode to create, create a lot. Don't be afraid or think you made too many because it's always better to make more than you need and have extra than to not have enough. Any of the extra can be used in another project, but it's always really, really nice to have an ample collection of things to choose from. And your collection can be a collection of things that you've made. So don't ever be afraid to create more than enough. The only side effect to making more than you need is you'll have to have somewhere to store those things. And that's a discussion we'll have at another time, dolls. So if you want me to give you a rule, always make more than enough. Buy only what you need or only what you don't want to make. <laughs> Look at the cookie tin. It looks like someone's been trying to sneak some cookies. I love the way it's looking now. It looks full and packed, overflowing with delicious food that's been cooked, jarred, and prepared in storage for the long winter months ahead for the rooming house dial. But piece by piece, you add and tuck, you fit, you move, you adjust it, Check the height, look at it again, try something else, and little by little, piece by piece, bit by bit, you're creating a beautiful image of a well-stocked pantry cabinet. I'm really excited for the dolls because now their kitchen and their pantry will be complete in addition to the rooming house bathroom. That's a little can that's lost its label. I'll have to show you dolls how to make that as well. Now dolls, sometime when things begin to get full, you may need to use some tweezers or a little stick to help you adjust things. Even after you put the wax on, sometimes things don't sit straight or level. So just poke them around with a toothpick or a stick until they look the way you want them to. And don't be afraid to stack your cans doing the same thing, adding a little wax to the top. And as I've mentioned in other videos, I'm an over waxer doll. So in a lot of my images, you will see wax. It's just what I do. I haven't disciplined myself enough to not put too much on there. Over the years, I've had instances where I didn't put enough wax on and things fell over. So I haven't learned to totally trust it. So I do over wax. So I guess in that way, I'm a work in progress as well, dolls. And so I'm feeling pretty good about that shelf. So I'm going to leave it alone for now and move to the next shelf. 
this is the shelf which we will call the top shelf which will be the discreet way of saying where the liquor and the wine is stored so i have a little pack of liqueurs and wines that i'm going to fit on that shelf and again the shelf was made specifically for these items so they fit really well some of them are going to fit a little tighter than others because as you know my little cabinet isn't perfectly square but it is perfect to hold the items that I designed it to hold. <laughs> I definitely need to find something to put on that little glob of wax next to the beets. But I'm going to continue to work on the wine shelf. And again, even in the arrangement of the wines, I want to vary the colors and the shapes and the designs of the bottles to give them the most interesting look. Now, while doing the wine bottles, I was still filling the second shelf as I was working and it's really beginning to look really, really full and nice. I love this project. These are the things that make a dollhouse come to life, all the little bitty details. Now here are some tiny bottles of actual liquors. So you see the bottles are quite a bit smaller. So I wanna tuck them in around the wine bottles just to look as though they have a nice collection or a nice supply inside the cabinet. I'm beginning to think I may need to have to put a little lock on the pantry cabinet. <laughs> yeah, I'm really feeling good about how the top shelf is looking. So I added more food to the corner. And I like the way the middle shelf and the bottom shelf are looking now that I've added some additional pieces. And I think I'm going to leave them alone for now. After a while, I stopped adding wine and liquor bottles to the top shelf because I didn't want to have more wine and liquor than food. So I'm going to just leave that at that. And I did find another little item that I made years and years ago. I was trying to find a place for it. And it really didn't fit in, even as a filler. So I saved it for another time. Sometimes, dolls, when you're doing projects like this, you have to leave it alone and come back. When working with miniatures, there are definitely times that you have to just step away. Sometimes you have moments of decision fatigue, and you just need a moment to get a cup of coffee, a glass of water, some lemonade. Just step away for a moment, and when you come back, you'll know what to do. Now, I also want you dolls to keep in mind that it is okay to leave some of your items in what I call a pending or incomplete status because there may be some other things you want to make or add or in the process of play you realize there's some other things that you would like in addition to what you have and you want to leave room that's perfectly okay as well so for right now I'm gonna leave this cabinet just the way it is because I actually have some more ideas I really like the way it turned out and I really like the way it's looking so far now, if you dolls enjoyed this video today, minus the extra wax, let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe. And always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I sure have enjoyed making this video for you dolls. And I have so much more in store. And I definitely would like to say a special thank you to all my subscribers, I appreciate you so, so very much. And also to those of you who haven't subscribed, but you're watching, I do appreciate you as well. Oh, I just remembered I had a couple pieces that I wanted to put on top of the cabinet. That's why I created that little border at the top. I have a jar of medicines and a couple casseroles and they need to be stored. A couple years ago, I made this little medicine box and filled it with jars of medicines and tonics I made. So we're going to keep that on the top shelf as well. I feel like I need something else, but I haven't decided what it is. So again, I'm going to stop for now. This project has got my mind brewing with some other things I'd like to create. So definitely stay tuned so you don't miss the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.